Well, here I am in the shop, and I thought I would just kind of show something along the way of what might help keep your, as far as piddling, to keep your mind off uh, being hungry or food. For supper tonight, I had a big old plate of fried squash, big old plate of green beans, fresh cut green beans, both fried in olive oil. And um, then I had a bowl of uh, bean soup with rice. And uh, then I guess, I don't know if you'd call it a dessert, but I had honeydew melon and cantaloupe. Stuffed to the gills. And, and that is something that's, that's just, is not only is it healthy, it's just not very high in calories. And like I said before, I'm deliberately, for this first week, I'm deliberately overeating to get into the groove of these types of foods. And then I'm going to start scaling back on portions. And, and, uh, but a good, a good way to keep your mind off being hungry, even if you, you know, slip into that mode, is find something to do. And uh, this is just one thing. Let me adjust the camera here. If a train comes by, it sure is noisy. I may have to stop and uh, then pick up again. But uh, what I have here is a recycled uh, two liter soda bottle. And if you watch my other videos, you know that I always try to show some example of recycling something, which is always good. But I'm going to use it to put the bird seed in to keep it fresh a lot longer. So. I'll just start by uh, filling it. And I have two particular types of birds I'm trying to attract. Finches frequent this area, and, and if you have finches around your place, you know they make the most beautiful cooing sound you've ever heard. I love to have them around. Woodpeckers also, if you can get past the, uh, get around the drilling that they do in the trees, woodpeckers make a very beautiful cooing sound too. They're really nice to have around. And of course, uh, robins, right, it's right about this time of year in this area that uh, should see, uh, start seeing robins. Of course, robins love uh, earthworms and whatnot. But I'll take uh, any, any, wild birds I can get around here. Also helps for uh, natural pest control in the garden. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill these. Uh, these are very inexpensive, um, very inexpensive bird feeders from Walmart. And uh, so the things that you do, you know, the cheaper the better. And uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money to keep your hands busy. You just don't. Well, you can have an expensive hobby, but uh, the cheaper the better as far as I'm concerned. I'm just going to hang these in the backyard so that uh, we're real close to the garden so that that'll be where the birds get used to being fed. I'm going to put these high enough up in the trees and isolate them well enough that the cats can't uh, bother the birds. And uh, I love having birds around. Um, I'm going to stop the tape and we'll get back positioned around, around the tree. Okay, I'll put mine up about 15 feet. Right, there's one, and I put it in a place that I shouldn't be bothered by cats, and then the other one, and walk around here, is right there, about the same height, of course see it's late winter. And this is a uh, white mulberry, or I'm sorry, a white, uh, yeah, white mulberry, which attracts, when it's in, when the fruit is set, this tree attracts birds like a magnet anyway because of those berries. This right here will help them 
help help them out when food is scarce this time of year anyway and um, then I have one more I'll hang somewhere specifically for finch and uh, I may set that on the other side close to the bedroom window so I can hear them cooing it's, it's just amazing sound that they make anyway these things don't have to cost a lot and uh, the less the better as far as I'm concerned. So try something like this to just kind of keep busy on, on things and it doesn't, doesn't cost a lot. And if I could hit the right button, I might even be able to communicate that idea. Anyway, um, I'll uh, make an entry toward the end of this week and we'll see uh, how things are shaping up. I had said earlier when I first started this that I would be totally honest about when uh, the diet wasn't going so well. And today's been a good example of that. You know, I'm in the first week and that's always going to be for just about everybody the toughest week. Even though I've done this before, it's still always the same when you're going back to healthy ways that you should, should have never fell out of, there's a transition period even if you've done this before and, and it can be tough and today I had to take off to take care of some business so uh, I've had a, a lot of uh, not not uh, being at work a lot of idle time so naturally the very first thing especially from habit comes into your mind is something to eat so uh, I haven't exactly fell off the wagon but what's, uh, what I did do is uh, I have been eating quite a bit today, but it's been uh, it's been things like portions of uh, honeydew melon and cantaloupe and mixed nuts, and then I had a bowl of uh, not a small bowl of uh, bean soup and rice, and then I've eaten salad and I cooked some squash and and. Like I said in the beginning, you know, I, my plan was to eat big portions of all that anyway. And then in the, in the second week began scaling back. So this has been, uh, this just, and, and this is all part of it. And as long as you have that in your mind, this is the one, one thing that I wanted to add to, to this, this week's entries was that um, if this happens to you, if you, if you, find yourself, uh, because it's just such a drastic change, if you feel like you just got to have a pizza and you're going to die if you don't get one, and then you, uh, you know, go out and overeat, or whatever it might be, um, uh, don't beat yourself up over it. Um, get over it and um, start over. Start again. But don't let it, uh, don't, don't let it get in the way of the clear picture you have of your commitment to this. That's when, that's when things uh, go downhill. But don't let one or two or three or four screw-ups in your plan, don't, don't let that, don't throw in the towel and say, oh, no, it just wasn't going to work anyway, because that's, uh, stay, just, get, just start over. Just have it in your mind, okay, this week didn't work out like I had wanted it to. And you'll always have pressure from from uh, friends and, and acquaintances that, you know, eating is together is such a custom going out and, and all and so on and so forth. But uh, start over, just start over. And it's like I said before, over and over again, is don't give up. Uh, it's it'd be a little disheartening if you find you, that you've let yourself slip, but uh, stop, regroup, and uh, start over. And you will achieve your goal. So if you, uh, to me, I mean, a lot of people may not s say that this is falling off the wagon at all. To me, it, it was a deviation. Um, even though these things were very healthy, um, your goal is the calorie deficit. But like I said, for the first week or two, allow that transition. Don't beat yourself up. Be easy on yourself and know that this is a, this is a tough transition. So, um, just uh, back up, start over, don't give up.
uh, you'll get there. And uh, also keep always in your mind that uh, what you're doing is walking away from the old life, the old bad habits. That, uh, and there's a lot of things that can make us all go back into those bad habits, or at the very least help us along the, the way to losing our direction on healthy living. So don't give up. Uh, just, just keep, if there's a cultivation of all uh, of, that I could recommend the most, you know, whatever diet way or diet plan that you find, you know, that's just going to be the tool. It's the cultivation of your mind. Let you keep this in your mind over and over and over that, uh, you know, you're, you're, you do want a healthy life. Uh, you want to uh, look good to yourself as well as others. And uh, all those things are totally natural. And just, just don't give up. So until the next day.